Hey guys! Thank you for joining me today to learn the Chapter 5 of Capital Adequacy Requirement 2023 for Canada Bank's Internal Ratings Based Approach for Credit Risk. Introduction Capital adequacy refers to the amount of capital that a bank needs to hold in order to absorb potential losses and maintain financial stability. It is a crucial aspect of the banking industry, as it helps ensure that banks are able to withstand unexpected events and continue to operate. This chapter provides guidance on how banks should measure and manage credit risk using the internal ratings-based IRB approach. Credit risk is the risk of loss due to a borrower's failure to meet their financial obligations, and the IRB approach is a method of assessing credit risk that takes into account a bank's internal ratings of borrowers. This chapter is an important aspect of capital adequacy for banks, as it provides guidance on how to manage credit risk and set aside appropriate levels of capital. Overview of Chapter 5 before we dive into the specifics of Chapter 5, let's start with an overview. Chapter 5 provides guidance on how banks should measure and manage credit risk using the IRB approach. Credit risk is the risk of loss due to a borrower's failure to meet their financial obligations. Key Requirements of Chapter 5 Now let's take a closer look at the key requirements of Chapter 5. There are several important requirements that banks must adhere to, including the use of internal ratings to assess the creditworthiness of borrowers and determine risk weights, the calculation of expected loss and unexpected loss for each exposure, the use of risk parameters, such as probability of default, loss given default, and exposure at default. Let's start by discussing the use of internal ratings. Internal ratings are used to assess the creditworthiness of borrowers and determine risk weights. Banks must develop and use a rating system to assign ratings to borrowers based on their creditworthiness. These ratings are then used to assign risk weights to different types of exposures. Let's say a bank has a corporate loan portfolio that includes loans to several companies. The bank assigns internal credit ratings to each borrower based on factors such as their financial strength, industry, and business model. The bank then uses these internal ratings to assign a risk weight to each loan, as per the IRB approach. For example, if a company has a strong credit rating, the bank may assign a lower risk weight to its loan, indicating a lower likelihood of default and loss. Conversely, if a company has a weaker credit rating, the bank may assign a higher risk weight to its loan, indicating a higher likelihood of default and loss. This process allows the bank to calculate the total risk-weighted assets, RWA, for the corporate loan portfolio and determine the amount of capital it needs to hold to cover potential losses. By assigning risk weights based on internal credit ratings, the bank is able to better capture the credit risk inherent in its loan portfolio and adjust its capital requirements accordingly. Overall, the use of internal ratings to assign risk weights enables the bank to better understand and manage credit risk by tailoring capital requirements to specific types of exposures. Next, we have the calculation of expected loss and unexpected loss for each exposure. Expected loss is the estimated loss that a bank can expect to incur over the life of an exposure. Unexpected loss is the amount of loss that can occur beyond the expected loss due to unforeseen events. These calculations help banks better manage credit risk and set aside appropriate levels of capital. Let's say a bank has a portfolio of loans, each with a different credit rating. The bank uses the internal ratings-based IRB approach to assess the credit risk of each loan and assigns them a risk weight based on their credit rating. The bank then calculates the total risk-weighted assets, RWA, for the portfolio using the formula outlined in Chapter 5 of the Capital Adequacy Requirement 2023 for Canada Banks. By doing this, the bank is able to determine the amount of capital it needs to hold in order to absorb potential losses from the portfolio. If the RWA is high, it means the portfolio has a higher risk and the bank needs to hold more capital to mitigate potential losses. Conversely, if the RWA is low, 
it means the portfolio has a lower risk and the bank needs to hold less capital. This calculation helps the bank better manage its credit risk by ensuring that it holds an appropriate level of capital to absorb potential losses. It also allows the bank to make informed decisions about its lending practices and adjust its portfolio to manage risk more effectively. Finally, we have the use of risk parameters. Risk parameters, such as probability of default, loss given default, and exposure at default, are used in the IRB approach to calculate risk weights for each exposure. Probability of default is the likelihood that a borrower will default on their obligation, while loss given default is the amount of loss a bank can expect to incur if a borrower defaults. Exposure at default is the amount of exposure that a bank has at the time a borrower defaults. Let's say a bank has a mortgage portfolio with different types of mortgages, such as fixed rate and adjustable rate mortgages. The bank assigns risk parameters to each type of mortgage based on factors such as the loan to value, LTV, ratio, credit score of the borrower, and the type of collateral. For example, if a fixed rate mortgage has a low LTV ratio and a high credit score borrower, the bank may assign a lower risk parameter to this type of mortgage, indicating a lower credit risk. Conversely, if an adjustable rate mortgage has a high LTV ratio and a low credit score borrower, the bank may assign a higher risk parameter to this type of mortgage, indicating a higher credit risk. The bank then uses these risk parameters to calculate the risk weight for each mortgage, as per the IRB approach. For instance, if the risk parameter for a fixed rate mortgage is 0.5 and the risk parameter for an adjustable rate mortgage is 1.2, the bank will use these values to calculate the risk weight for each mortgage. By assigning risk parameters to specific types of exposures and using them to calculate risk weights, the bank is able to better capture the credit risk inherent in its mortgage portfolio and adjust its capital requirements accordingly. This enables the bank to better manage credit risk by tailoring its capital requirements to specific types of exposures in its mortgage portfolio. Now that we have a better understanding of the requirements of Chapter 5, let's discuss the implications for banks. Compliance with Chapter 5 will likely result in increased capital requirements for certain types of exposures. Banks will also need to make changes to their credit risk management practices and internal models to comply with the new requirements. Banks may need to adjust their operations and strategies to comply with Chapter 5 of the Capital Adequacy Requirement 2023 for Canada banks in the following ways. Internal Credit Rating Systems Banks will need to develop or improve their internal credit rating systems to ensure that they accurately capture the credit risk inherent in their portfolios. This may involve investing in new technology or data analytics to improve the accuracy of credit ratings. Data collection and management. Banks will need to ensure that they have robust data collection and management systems in place to support the calculation of risk weights and the determination of capital requirements. This may involve investing in new systems or processes to ensure that data is collected and managed consistently across the organization. Risk reporting and monitoring. Banks will need to enhance their risk reporting and monitoring capabilities to ensure that they have a clear understanding of their risk profile and capital adequacy. This may involve developing new risk reporting frameworks or enhancing existing ones to ensure that they provide timely and accurate information to senior management and regulators. Product Pricing and Risk Appetite Banks may need to adjust their product pricing and risk appetite to ensure that they are consistent with their capital requirements under Chapter 5. This may involve increasing the pricing of higher risk products or reducing exposure to certain types of exposures that carry higher risk weights. Overall, compliance with Chapter 5 may require banks to make significant investments in their systems and processes to ensure that they are able to accurately measure and manage credit risk. This may involve changes to their operations and strategies, and will require ongoing monitoring and review to ensure that they remain compliant with regulatory requirements. In conclusion, Chapter 5 of the Capital Adequacy Requirement 2023 for Canada Banks provides guidance on how banks should measure and manage credit risk using the internal ratings-based IRB approach. 
The IRB approach allows banks to assess credit risk based on their internal ratings of borrowers and set aside appropriate levels of capital to mitigate potential losses. It is important for banks to comply with the requirements outlined in this chapter, as failure to do so could result in penalties and regulatory action. Thank you for watching this video on the Capital Adequacy Requirements 2023. If you found this information useful, please consider subscribing to our channel for more updates on regulatory requirements. Also, don't forget to share this video with your friends and colleagues who may find it helpful. We welcome your comments and feedback, and we look forward to bringing you more informative content in the future.